Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Hard Rock 100. We are here in the Silverton Gym. We are excited to be bringing some live broadcasts to the 2023 Hard Rock for uh, this year's event. And we are going to be doing some pre-race interview sit-down chats with some of our athletes, some of our behind-the-scenes Hard Rock committee members, people that put this race on. Want to have some cool conversations before we get going on Friday and joined today by Mael Backhausen. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you? How are Do, you? Doing great. Uh, Mael has been getting me out on some runs this week in uh, amongst setting up for this. So thank you for that. Man, it's always a pleasure to go running with you and in San Juan's. Yeah, the 28th running of the Hard Rock 100. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be just another incredible event to showcase what this sport's all about, this community. And here in the San Juans, we're also joined with Harmony and Dylan Bowman, which is uh, two, of the, two of the greater people of the, of the trail community, which I'm stoked to be able to bring up and have a chat with. So, uh, yeah, man. And how's it all going to work? How's this live stream going to work? Yeah, we're going to go more into that, I think, later, um, probably in a separate we're going to sit down with Dale actually and talk all about that, the Rock specifics roll. of the live stream. So we want to keep these more focused to our athletes. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Dylan, welcome. Harmony, welcome. How are you guys doing? Guys, we're doing so great. And we're glad that we can start off this amazing weekend of live streaming. And as we were just saying before we went live here, you guys always set the standard at Aravipa. It's amazing that you're bringing a real broadcast to the Hard Rock 100 for the first time. And Jamil texted me this morning. He said, hey, feel free to bring any crew or pacers and stuff. And grandma and grandpa are watching our little baby boy. So we brought crew chief extraordinaire, Harmony. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm <laughs> excited to be here. So nice. it's one of the best races to crew. That's awesome. Yeah, you got a little one in tow this year. So that'll, I'm sure, add to the dynamics. Yeah, I recall in 2021 seeing you finish with your son, and so I'm very much looking forward to that. In fact, I really, really, really want to finish just because of that. So that will definitely enhance my motivation when things get hard, inevitably on Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, whenever it happens. Devo, surely there's no doubt that you're going to finish this race, man. <laughs> like, you came second in 2021. You're an absolute beast. Like we've all seen you finish so many hundreds before, duke it out and have amazing performances and also just, you know, death march it to the finish. Like you, you gotta have confidence in yourself, bro. Like you're Debo. You know, it's, it's funny you say that. I mean, 2021 was definitely one of the best races of my career. It was really like a highlight of the 15 years that I've spent in the sport, the day went by like in a flash. And I speaking for Harmony too, it was just like such a special day for all of us and such a happy memory. That year I was like very committed. We spent six weeks in mammoth training and yeah, I have been in the sport for a long time. I do have a lot of experience, probably maybe the most experience of anybody in the field, at least that is maybe gonna be competitive. Still, though, like, I don't know, I feel like um, usually I have an instinct about how things are going to go, and I don't really have an instinct. And Harmony and I have been talking today, too. Like, I usually never get nervous before races, and I feel, like, genuinely nervous for this one, which is, like, a totally foreign feeling. So it does feel, like, a little bit new, even though I've been in the game for such a long time, and this is my second hard rock, and the first one went so well. I mean... The only yeah. thing I was going to add is I don't want to reveal too much, but this is the first time you've ever said you're nervous in your life. It makes me nervous because you're like kind of freaking out. Like you're, you're nervous. You've been nervous all day. I think part kind of it of is like, around. you know, I've spent the last two weeks here marching around on the course and the course is definitely in rougher, harder condition. I don't usually love the heat. It's going to be pretty warm. So those two things probably play into it. But I think more than anything is just like having not felt super committed and dialed in as a pure athlete for a long time. 
sometimes it feels like the game has passed you by and you're not sure really like once you pin the bib back on and like really try for something if you're going to be up for it again so i guess those are sort of the the things i'm struggling with right now at the same time i have to say i'm so happy to be here i freaking love this race and this course and i'm excited that i get another opportunity to to take it on yeah. looking back at 2021 you said it went by in a flash and it was one of the best races of your life did you have any real low moments to speak of or was it just kind of like consistently feeling good out there i definitely had a really good day that said i felt pretty rough for a long time basically between ure and kt that that's a really long stretch i mean that was probably six or seven hours but even though I wasn't feeling great, like I was still moving really well. And I knew I was like moving well. I just wasn't, it wasn't coming easy. Finally at KT, I started turning it around and finished strong or what felt strong to me. Of course, Francois had opened up a monster gap. Maybe we can talk about that in a sec, but we put out a video that documented my race from 2021. And when I crossed Mineral Creek at mile 98, you know, I'm just like, this is the best day ever, you know? I'm not even done yet, and I'm just, like, glowing about how amazing of an experience it was. And it wasn't just the race itself. It was, like, you know, everything about it. Like, the six weeks we spent in Mammoth, you know, we did the Western States live stream for the first time that year, which was amazing. And then just, like, everything clicked when we were here. Harmony had a great time. Ryan had a good time. My extended friends and family that were here had a great time. So it was just a super special, super special life moment so i think the challenge is really to enjoy those memories but like not necessarily expect that the exact same flow state is going to happen and and enjoy this experience for what it is which is going to be different for sure dude you've spoken about it pretty openly before but you know you didn't you didn't just get a ticket on your first try like it was a it was a long-term process of like applying and, and waiting and and then i guess as the universe does it's just like it allowed you to run in 2021 like do you think that that's part of this race? That's part of the mystique. That's like the challenge of it. Like, do you think that added to your experience too? Totally. You should tell the story about how you got in and what was it? 2018. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Maybe okay. Start, start there. So I got, I, I first started applying for the lottery in 2010, finally got pulled in December of 2018 race gets canceled in 2019 you were staying with us in colorado at the time this was yeah. the year that it got canceled due to snowpack the avalanches and all that my ankle was broken at the time so i couldn't have run if the race happened anyway so that was like a blessing then of course covid 2020 and you so fell off your bike as well i did fall off my bike while you were here yeah that was like in the same way that hard rock 2021 was flow state Hard Rock 2019, a race that didn't happen. That was like really one of the low points of my life. And so, yes, Mael, when we finally had the opportunity to be here in 2021, I was carrying that, you know, like 11 years of trying to get in. I'd crewed and paced and been here for the race probably, you know, eight to 10 times in that decade. And it was finally my opportunity. I grew up in Colorado too, which... You know, you can't help but feel like a little bit of a homecoming there. So, yeah, it was just like a really, really magical weekend. And, um, yeah, I, I think that's one of the reasons why it did feel like it went by in a flash. And it did feel like more or less easy, you know, as easy as it can possibly feel. And I think that's really why one of the reasons why I ran so fast that year, in, in addition to it being good conditions and stuff. So I think I, more or less the moral of the story is that, like, the, the emotional part of it really does make a difference for your performance. Yeah. Anything you want to add? <laughs> Dylan, I saw you were getting out on the course this year. Can you talk a little bit about the conditions this year compared to 2021? I saw, I think you posted a video of like a snow bridge on Divey's Little Giant. That looked pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so again, the last couple of weeks I've just been marching around on the course. And the first few days I was like, oh no like this is gonna be wild just socked in just tons of snow tons and low you know down to like ten thousand feet in some places um yeah so the what you're referencing is yeah up at the top of the very first climb there was a couple pretty dangerous snow fields up there 
It's and a dicey section, even when there's no snow. It's a little rib in a single track, and there's some big cliffs. Yeah, and it's like it's a beautiful, incredible flat trail for like 100 meters, right? And it should take you a minute to get across. It took me 40 minutes to cross it in training with spikes on, with my poles. The whole time, I'm just thinking like, dude, you got a kid now. You can't be doing this stupid stuff. <laughs> and then I got across, took a video, showed it to Harmony. She's, of course, like, you can't be doing this stuff. And, um, but shout out to the race organization, Brett, who I think is the course director who owns Durango Running Company. He and a team went out and cut a, a trench through that snow field, which will make it 100% safe for the runners and you know that's certainly something that i think not only myself and my family but every racer will appreciate but all the last couple of weeks i've been talking about how nerve-wracking the course kind of is right now a hundred percent i that's another thing i haven't really heard you talk about much either it's just like how nervous you are for the conditions of the course i've gotten a lot of texts that were like i don't know if i can do this i i'm really worried for the other racers and people who aren't comfortable in the mountains, and then as soon as you saw that trench, you were like, okay, they're, <laughs> they're on it. You know, kind of your excitement started building. Yeah, so, so again, shout out to, to the race organizers putting it together in a year where there's historic snowfall in the area, and it seems like all the dangerous sections have been mitigated. There's still going to be a ton of snow on the course, which I think will slow it down in addition to the heat. Um, but it's a postgraduate race, and this is going to be a, a different, unique hard rock. Yeah, I forget how many times they mention exposure in the runner guide, but I think it's quite a few times. It's a real thing out there. Harmony, uh, crewing this race, how does it compare with other events? Could you describe it for people that haven't been out here before? I can, yeah. Um, I think it's one of the best ones to crew. And actually last time, kind of the going into it, you were like, this is going to be the first time I want you to slow me down at the aid stations. I want to sit down and take my time. So sometimes going into like, let's say Western States, you're nervous because you're like, you want to get your runner through so quickly. And at Hard Rock, it's like a huge advantage to sit down, potentially change your shoes, eat real food. And that's a first for you and a lot of runners. So I feel like that's a big, it makes crewing a lot easier because <laughs> it's less stressful. Um, and it's all beautiful. Like it's just so nice to be out there. I feel like I have a little bit of a vacation. We have one set of grandparents on the baby, one watching the dogs. So like, I'm kind of out there really enjoying myself. I have time to go for like little hikes or runs. So it's a, it's a really different, unique, beautiful experience. How many, I've got to, I've got to ask you, I'm so stoked to be able to have this opportunity to ask this question. <laughs> um, so I've been around, I've been around with, like had the pleasure of being around the world with Dylan at some of his races and help crew as well. Um, and I'm just wondering, like, you know, Debo, you're a pro. You take this very seriously in, in all aspects of the sport. And now seeing what you do with Free Trail, like, you invest so much of your time and energy into this whole community. And, and, um, and I think it's just evident in your results and also, like I said, Free Trail. But, like, Harmony, you've got to be there, like, 24-7 with Debo. And he, because he's a pro... He takes things very seriously. I'm like, how are you not just his rock, but how are you like a bloody diamond for him? Like, what do you do day in and day out to support someone like Dylan? Because um, that's got to be a job. Yeah, just just a diamond. You know, I'll go with that one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no answer beyond that. Um, no, I mean, during, during the races, I feel like we just stay super calm. I love it. I love being out in the mountains, but I hate racing. And I love going to the races, so it's kind of perfect because I'll never want to do one of these races myself. I love being a part of it, so it makes me a really good supporter for you when you want to race. And then I get to, you know, you taper and you take time off after, and we have childcare, and then I go do my thing. So, yeah. Maybe just to add my perspective here, yeah, Harmony has been with me as sort of crew chief for, you know, at least a decade now. We've been together for 12 years, and. Yeah, I mean, it's been an awesome journey to, like, share our time in the sport together. And you know, we've been talking about, like, I don't know how many more of these, like, I have left of, like, really trying to push and crush it. And it's been a great time to just sort of, like, share that together. And similarly, like, with Free Trail, too, like, it may not be evident to everybody publicly because, like, I'm very much sort of, like, forward-facing. But Harmony is, like, 
really the key and the glue behind the scenes that sort of keeps our whole operation together. And so it's great that we've not only been able to share, you know, sort of like my athletic career together as a family, travel around, you know, now having our son here with us, but also with our business too. It's very much a family business. I know Jamil can sort of feel the same thing with, with your family and what everything you guys do. And it's really special. I mean, and it's, uh, it's just a privilege to be back here in Silverton and my home state of Colorado and, have a second chance to try and repeat what was a fantastic day for us in 2021. It's awesome. Well, we've got um, one of the partners of our race. We've got this special drink and I'm going to offer it to all of our guests for these previous interviews. You guys don't feel pressure, but we do have some Flota here. So we're going to get, can we get a couple cans for them? We're going to get, we're going to get some help here from Brett Hornig, but uh, we've got some, some chilled Flota. So, for each of you, you guys feel free to drink it now or take it with you. But uh, Flota is, is out here as part of Trail Runner and their uh, partnership with Hard Rock. So shout we, out to do them. Do we get one? Oh, yeah. If my all needs one, yeah, for sure. This is the most brilliant product <laughs> in the history of endurance sport. Are we going to do Great packaging, one? great branding, and I guess I do have to try it out. All right. You know? We're doing this. Let's do this. We'll save one and Come on, Harmony. <laughs> Because I've never, this is a first timer. Oh, just like I expected it. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Here's to the live stream. Yeah. Dylan, Cheers, mate. have Cheers. a great run, man. Thanks, guys. Harmony, have a great time out there. Thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> really is flat soda. <laughs> it, really is. it really is. So um, Dylan, any other thoughts before you go check in? Because I just heard Dale Garland in the background here. Uh, I guess they're about to start checking. Uh, no closing thoughts. You know, just again, glad to be here. Really excited that you guys are actually going to be bringing this live stream to life for the first time. If things go bad for me, I plan to just pull my phone out and listen along during the course of whatever it <laughs> yeah. is i'm sure a 50-hour broadcast or something like that but appreciate you guys having both of us on and uh yeah looking forward to race day awesome we'll check in with us uh when you're done with the race hopefully we have you back on the couch and uh you can recap how it all went out there excellent thanks so much you guys awesome thanks, thanks guys, yeah. thanks, guys.